So we all know next week is Nintendo uh, beginning a huge playtest for something related to Nintendo Switch Online. And given that the playtest lasts 12 days and runs into November, chances are whatever it is is slated for 2025 and not this year. Nintendo has gone ahead and teased something that seems related to this for 2025 as well in a very direct way. So direct, it's impossible to ignore and paints a very interesting narrative when it comes to the future of Nintendo's online services. That's because Nintendo sent out a very peculiar email that says something very un-Nintendo-like at a time when there doesn't seem to be any reason to need to do so. The email is seemingly celebrating three years of the expansion pass existing for Nintendo Switch Online. A strange thing to celebrate, but this is Nintendo and they sometimes celebrate weird things. However, what's notable in this is the tease towards the end. It simply states, what excitement will the next year bring for Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack members? Stay tuned to find out. We may have an idea of what this is thanks to shipping data leaks and other hints directly from Nintendo. But before we explore this further, we're on the road to 140,000 subscribers, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel for more Nintendo goodness. Now first up, for several months now, things have been popping up on Nintendo's shipping data with their manufacturing partners. The main reason we have been paying attention to this data is because we were trying to discover new things about the Nintendo Switch 2. And yes, that has bared a little bit of fruit. However, buried in this data is a reference to components that indicate some sort of GameCube controller redesign or reworking or just a new GameCube controller by Nintendo. Now, that's fine, but we already have GameCube controller support, right? Sure, but not technically officially wirelessly. Like We don't have a wireless GameCube controller from Nintendo, but there are definitely third-party options. The problem with that, well, as of Nintendo's latest firmware update, select third-party GameCube controllers appear to just not be working anymore. It's possible these controllers merely need a firmware update to be compatible, but it's quite strange that those are the only third-party controllers having problems. Now, I won't pretend I discovered that issue on my own. While I have been working on this video since last night when Blue Bomber member of the channel Tall Show sent me the email and made me aware of what Nintendo was doing, it was actually Andres Restart, friend of the channel's video today, that made me aware of the firmware update controller issues. So I want to make sure I give him credit where credit is too. Thanks, buddy. Nintendo has released wireless controllers for prior NSO system editions, whether it was Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, Genesis, etc., etc. So I am sure you can see how you can take that prior data here and come to the conclusion that the test for next week is for GameCube Nintendo Switch Online Edition. However, why would Nintendo need to test for GameCube NSO when they didn't test for anything else they've added? That's an interesting question, is it not? Remember, whatever edition is coming next year that was teased by Nintendo in that email is specifically for Expansion Pass members. Now, when the test for next week first came out, and I talked about the possibility of a streaming service, possibly one that's directly for GameCube. Now, when the test that goes live next week first became known, I talked about the possibility of a streaming service, possibly one that's directly for GameCube. This isn't to say Switch cannot emulate GameCube games. Some have ha hacked their Switch to do just that, but streaming the games could be a quicker way for Nintendo to get a release out the door, especially quickly. In order to see if that service is feasible, you would need to conduct a wider test. But the problem with that idea is the app that people are downloading next week is 2.2 gigabytes in size, well beyond the needed size for a streaming service. Okay, fine. Then this is just a native GameCube Nintendo Switch Online edition that has a handful of games in it, hence the 2.2 gigabytes in size. And after all, GameCube games are way bigger than the N64 games are, where that app takes up 1.6 gigabytes. So sure, I could buy that. It would line up with the GameCube controller stuff being wonky after the update, and it lines up with the shipping data and the size of the app. But there's one problem with this. 
Nintendo is heavily suggesting people play whatever they are testing next week in TV mode and also use a wired connection. Why would games being played natively need that? Online multiplayer? Okay, but they don't make that suggestion to play Switch games in online multiplayer, so why would we need it for this? Now that's a very good question. Maybe the GameCube stuff is entirely unrelated to the test next week then, but Nintendo is promising updates in 2025. This is where I want to bring in the idea of social features, local voice chat, messaging service, game help drop-ins, and more. PlayStation and Xbox both feature various things like this, and maybe Nintendo has developed an entire application for it. One locked behind the expansion pass, which might show a much higher adoption rate with adults than children, thus ensuring a little bit that social features are kept slightly away from the kids and more leaning towards the older Nintendo audience. Now, this would be understandable then, why the app is the size it is, and why Nintendo needs to test it. Others have even speculated it could be the full-on return of Miiverse, but I just don't see Nintendo wanting to do that. Maybe I'm wrong. I just, I just don't see it. And now we may know what this is as soon as the 20th, because that's when the next update for people for next week is coming. And certainly on the 23rd, when the demo begins, we'll know. And whatever Nintendo is teasing in the email may only be tangentially related. Maybe all of what I said is happening here's the thing folks we don't know what nintendo is doing for this big nintendo switch online update we just don't there's a lot of speculation there's a lot of guesses there's a lot of hullabaloo out there about nintendo making big changes but well, the key thing is they did send that email the email does exist now i haven't gotten one but a lot of you have a lot of you could verify that you've gotten this email from nintendo and with Nintendo promising an update for Expansion Pass members within the next 12 months next year, you obviously have this test next week. I have a hard time separating the two as two separate things. Now, I don't believe Nintendo just needs to like do a test to add a new platform to the system. Because if that was the case, why didn't we have to test Genesis? Why didn't we have to test the Super Nintendo or the Game Boy or the Game Boy Advance? We never had to test things before, so why would we need to test things now? And could Nintendo still be offering some sort of streaming game service that's just different? And maybe it's all bundled in with a bunch of other social features. That's entirely possible too. The big question is, what is Nintendo cooking? I don't know. We spend so much time on this channel, at least, at least lately, focused in on very specific things like the Mario Party stuff we talked about earlier today or when we zero in on Switch 2 conversations, which we're going to continue to have. And yes, the Giga Leak is absolutely insane. The Terra Leak, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you want to know how insane the Terra Leak is getting? Let me just toss this in towards the end of the video. It looks like there's a playable version of Pokemon Legends ZA. Let me repeat that again. It looks like in the Terra Leak, is a playable PC version, so a PC test version, of Pokemon Legends ZA. And yes, this probably will leak online at some point. And yes, you can play the game to completion, whatever that means. That's crazy. We haven't even seen gameplay for this game yet. And already, the whole thing might be leaked. That's the world we're living in right now. And anything Nintendo can do to kind of distract us from this massive breach in security is probably a good thing. It's just, what is it? What is this test? What are they taking us away from? And what are they doing with Nintendo Switch Online? Because we already know Nintendo Switch Online is forward compatible. We know Nintendo accounts are forward compatible. Again, we focus a lot on that next system. But my question is, what's this thing? What ways are Nintendo evolving, adding to, or making Nintendo Switch Online even more worth the money? I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on this? You guys let me know down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.